SpaceX just broke the impossible barrier. They landed the Falcon Heavy Center Core, the rocket piece that's crashed and burned every single attempt for seven years. While Blue Origin can't even land one booster, SpaceX just mastered the hardest landing in spaceflight. This changes the entire space race. But here's the real question. How does this secret technique now make Starship unstoppable? Let's dive right in. Here's what makes this recovery absolutely mind-blowing. The Falcon Heavy Center Core isn't just another rocket booster. It's a completely different beast. Think of it like this. If a regular Falcon 9 booster is a sports car coming down the highway, the Center Core is a loaded freight train screaming through at 5,000 miles per hour while literally on fire. This thing weighs 20% more than a regular booster. It has reinforced tank walls, extra structural supports and attachment points that completely change how it behaves during re-entry. When it separates from the side boosters, it's still carrying momentum from the entire Falcon Heavy stack. That means it's coming down at six to seven times the speed of sound, over 5,000 miles per hour, while the air around it turns into plasma hot enough to melt steel. But here's the killer problem. To slow down from those insane speeds, it needs to burn massive amounts of fuel. The same fuel that could be used to carry heavier payloads to orbit. It's like trying to save money while spending twice as much. That's exactly why SpaceX gave up trying for seven years. Let me paint you a picture of just how impossible this seemed. Since the very first Falcon Heavy flight in February 2018, every single center core ended the same way. Boom. Fireball. Ocean grave. Mission after mission, SpaceX watched their most expensive piece of hardware, worth about $28 million, disappear into the Atlantic. The side boosters? Those landed like clockwork because they're basically identical to proven Falcon 9 boosters. They separate early, have manageable re-entry speeds, and follow well-understood flight profiles. But that center core was cursed. It stayed attached longer, burned hotter, came down faster, and required precision that seemed to defy the laws of physics. Engineers at NASA called it the impossible landing. The math just didn't work. How do you catch something moving faster than a bullet while it's surrounded by plasma that would vaporize most materials? Every attempt ended in spectacular failure, and the space industry started to believe it might actually be impossible. Then came the KF-02 mission, and SpaceX did something that shocked everyone, including their own engineers. Instead of using B-1091 as a center core in a full Falcon Heavy configuration, they completely reimagined the mission. They stripped it down and flew it solo as a Falcon 9. Wait, what? Why would you downgrade your most powerful rocket? That's where this story takes a stunning turn. John Edwards from SpaceX revealed the secret strategy. This wasn't about downgrading anything. This was about proving that their most complex hardware could be transformed, reused, and perfected in ways nobody thought possible. B-1091 wasn't retiring after this mission. It was just getting started on a journey that would rewrite the rules of rocket reusability. Here's exactly how they cracked the impossible code. When B-1091 began its entry burn, veteran SpaceX watchers noticed something extraordinary. The burn started at 4.1 kilometers altitude instead of the typical 3.2 kilometers for regular Falcon 9 missions. That extra 900 meters might not sound like much, but it represents a complete revolution in landing technique. Instead of trying to force the center core to behave like a regular booster, SpaceX adapted their entire landing algorithm to work with its heavier, more aggressive nature. They gave it more time and distance to slow down, accounting for every gram of extra weight and every mile per hour of additional speed. The precision was surgical. Eight minutes after liftoff, B-1091 touched down on the drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas in the Atlantic Ocean. After seven years of failures, SpaceX made the impossible look routine. The crowd at mission control erupted. The impossible had become reality. But here's the bombshell that's sending shockwaves through the entire aerospace industry. This center core landing isn't just about Falcon Heavy. It's about proving that SpaceX can master the most difficult spacecraft recovery scenarios imaginable. And that has direct implications for the future of human space exploration. When Starship eventually returns from Mars missions, 
it will face similar challenges. Extreme atmospheric entry speeds, intense heat, precision landing requirements with minimal fuel margins. The techniques SpaceX just perfected with B-1091 are the exact same principles they'll need for interplanetary missions. Every failed center core landing over the past seven years taught them something crucial. Every explosion revealed a weakness in their algorithms. Every impossible challenge became a stepping stone toward making humans a multi-planetary species. NASA engineers are stunned because they realize SpaceX just solved problems that NASA has been struggling with for decades. While SpaceX celebrates this historic breakthrough, their competition is in complete panic mode. Blue Origin finally launched New Glenn in January 2025 after years of delays and billions in development costs. The result? They reached orbit but completely failed to land their booster. Jeff Bezos watched his first attempt at something SpaceX has now done over 500 times. Think about that for a second. SpaceX just landed the most difficult rocket recovery ever attempted, while Blue Origin can't even manage basic booster recovery. The gap isn't just widening, it's becoming a chasm that may be impossible to cross. Rocket Lab is still experimenting with parachute recoveries like it's 1960. Stoke Space pushed their first orbital launch to 2026. Chinese companies are making progress with hop tests, but they're literally years behind SpaceX's operational capabilities. While competitors struggle with basic concepts, SpaceX is already perfecting techniques for Mars missions. Let's talk about what this landing really means for the space economy. Every successful center core recovery saves SpaceX approximately $28 million in hardware costs. But the real value isn't in the money saved. It's in the capabilities unlocked. B-1091 will now fly multiple missions as both a single-stick Falcon 9 and eventually as part of a Falcon Heavy configuration. This cross-training approach means SpaceX can optimize their entire fleet, reduce costs, and increase mission reliability simultaneously. The flexibility is unprecedented in aerospace history. Need to launch Amazon's Kuiper satellites? Use the center core as a Falcon 9. Need to launch a massive payload to deep space? Reconfigure it for Falcon Heavy. Need to test new landing techniques? Convert it back to single stick mode. One piece of hardware, infinite possibilities. But here's the most shocking revelation that's making aerospace experts lose sleep. This center core breakthrough directly accelerates Starship development in ways that will leave NASA and international space agencies scrambling to catch up. The same fuel management techniques, precision landing algorithms, and heat shield innovations that made B-1091's landing possible are being integrated into Starship's flight control systems right now. When Starship attempts its first crewed mission to Mars, it won't be flying blind. It'll be using battle-tested technology proven on the most challenging rocket recovery ever attempted. The center core landing wasn't just a milestone, it was a Mars mission rehearsal. Every second of flight data from B-1091 is feeding directly into Starship's development, making humanity's journey to Mars not just possible, but inevitable. What happens when the most innovative space company on Earth removes their last remaining limitation? SpaceX isn't stopping with B-1091. Sources inside the company reveal that this center core will fly at least three more times as a single-stick configuration before joining a Falcon Heavy mission. Each flight generates data that feeds directly into Starship's development. If SpaceX can routinely recover center cores, they can reduce Falcon Heavy launch costs by over 30%. That makes their heaviest lift rocket even more competitive and gives them unprecedented pricing flexibility. But the real question isn't about cost savings anymore. The real question is what becomes possible when SpaceX masters every aspect of rocket reusability. What happens when landing a 20% heavier rocket at 5,000 miles per hour becomes as routine as landing a Falcon 9? What doors open when the impossible becomes just another Tuesday at SpaceX? Based on what we witnessed on August 11th, that transformation is happening faster than anyone imagined. While competitors struggle with basic booster landings, SpaceX is already proving techniques that will take humans to Mars. While others debate whether rocket reusability is economically viable, SpaceX is making it look effortless. The center core landing isn't just a technical achievement.
It's a declaration that the age of expendable rockets is over. It's proof that with enough engineering persistence and innovative thinking, even physics itself can be bent to human will. And if SpaceX can turn the impossible into routine, what other impossible barriers are about to fall? The answer to that question will reshape not just the space industry, but the entire future of human civilization. So here we are. SpaceX just turned seven years of impossible into eight minutes of reality. They caught a rocket that physics said couldn't be caught, while their competitors can't even land basic boosters. But this isn't really about rockets, is it? This is about what happens when you refuse to accept limitations. When you turn every failure into data, every explosion into education. SpaceX didn't just land a center core yesterday. They proved that the word impossible is just another engineering challenge waiting to be solved. The techniques perfected on August 11th are already flowing into Starship development. The same algorithms, the same precision, the same stubborn refusal to quit. Which means we're not just watching rocket history. We're watching the birth of technologies that will take humans to Mars. But here's what keeps me up at night thinking about this. If SpaceX can master something this complex, what other impossible barriers are about to fall? And more importantly, what does this mean for the timeline to Mars? Drop your thoughts below. Are we looking at the moment everything changed? Let me know what you think is next for SpaceX.